one should think about the philosophy behind this work, I think we try as artists in general with site-specific work is to get the people and the mind back in relationship with nature again. I think we try to reconnect the cycles of life of which we are part, growth, change, creation, distraction, life, death, to make us realize that we exist because of nature. We exist because of a place where we're living, where we're waking, where we're making art. And I think that's what we want to do is through the artwork is make people aware of the beauty of nature, aware of the site, aware of the fragility, not only of human beings, but only of nature and how it all involves into one big cycle of nature itself. My name is Stradum van der Merwe. I'm an artist and I'm one of the organizers of the first site-specific event uh, which were organized in Plettenberg Bay. We invited a lot of artists to come and work for one week and the idea was that the artist must use nature, the natural material, or the beauty of Plettenberg Bay to create artworks on site. And the exhibition, if you want to call it like that, lasted for that week. Plettenberg Bay is a very specific place with a very particular identity. It's a beautiful landscape and has a, a very rich heritage. Um, so it's a wonderful place to work in. Of course the landscape allows for quite a bit. And then you have all the material available. That's the most incredible place. There's this energy, this natural beauty. There's, you know, there's forests, lagoons, sea, mountains, rivers. It's all here. Features. When you're living on farms like these, or rural areas, or outside the cities, you realize the importance of the water, and the trees, and the sky, and the earth. I think big cities miss this picture. This is one of the nicest places in South Africa to live, and uh, we're fortunate to be here. Yeah. The location is 10, uh, 10 kilometers out of uh, Plettenberg Bay, which gives it a nice outsider angle. As you can see, it's, it's pretty wild out here. This place used to be an old uh, quarry, abandoned for about 30 years now. It's just left to, to grow back. It's a bit of a no-man's land. I, I see it now as, as more of a special place where people can come and enjoy on the weekends. They need to get out of their urban environments and just uh, reconnect with, with nature once again. Land art obviously takes its inspiration from, from nature. And we echo those ideas. And through echoing those ideas and forms and shapes, we learn about them and so teach others. Site Pacific is an art movement. I think that started because artists had the feeling that if you go to an art gallery and you look at an artwork, you don't really know where it comes from. You know who the artist was and it is in a little label next to the artwork. And a number of artists starts to feel that we must have a closer relationship to the artwork. We must, we must get a feeling of what's the meaning of the artwork and the reason for its existence. And then they start to produce artworks that only exist because of that specific place where the work have been made. And that's where the term site-specific comes from. So an artwork is made for that site. The work exists because of that site. My name is Mark Wilby. Um, I'm one of the participating artists in this site specific event here in Plett. This is the first day here. Uh, we've just finished a walk around the trail, what's going to become the core of the public event here. And all of these artists have been looking at various sites, uh, most people for the first time. So I think there's a lot of, lot of stuff for people to process and think about. I have conceptual ideas that I've been working on in my own town, in my own space, in my own time, and now coming here, it's, that's an odd process, it's slightly different, because now it's, it's those ideas, possibly in the harsh light of day, how are they gonna appear to people? How are people gonna receive these? How does, how does it relate to what other people are doing? My name is Simon Max Bannister. I'm a land artist, and this is my work for the, site-specific land art event and it's symbolically 
represents the progression of elephants as they go through their cycles of life. The title is Art Mudars, that's got wonderful layers of meaning to it. It's Afrikaans because it relates to the community, the way the site is at, the Griqua community, overlooking this beautiful stretch of coastline. Really hopes to talk about how elephants make way for other smaller creatures to be prolific in what they do. Uh, it talks about looking at leaders, particularly women leaders, in, in how they can inspire their community and the roles that they can play in their community. Hi, my name is Lelo Inchindiario. And I'm Tony Muller. And the whole idea of this piece was to encourage people to plant trees. The piece itself is made up of a lot of poplar and a lot of roots that we've recovered from the river. The trees behind are all from an old dam. The beginning of the sculpture demonstrate how much devastation there's going on. Agonia is a man coming out of the ground shackled to it. It symbolizes more that we're on a path of self-destruction if we don't plant trees. The portal indicates a crossover from the way we are doing things to the way we should be thinking. And it enters into a pathway again of the older trees which have near disappeared, and then it's lined by bonsais, which we feel in the future, if we don't change, will probably be the only old trees that we see. At the end, there's a wisdom table, a table of wisdom, which Fania and I constructed, and uh, it's all inlaid in lead and has these wonderful messages. And that's really the whole message that the, the piece is supposed to give.